Hello and welcome to my finance teacher. Let's talk about the stock markets. Now that over the last couple of weeks they are not really doing so well. Nowadays you see a lot of analysts talking doom and gloom about the stock markets and of course you will see in uh, some of my previous videos we forecasted uh, some cool down in the stock markets based on um, cycle duration which is generally about half a year with some cycles extending for a one year duration and with the fact that stock markets were a little bit stretched on the upside relative to their 100 and 200 day moving averages so now over the last couple of weeks the stock markets have slided down this is s p 500 and also i want to have a look at nasdaq the first thing that jumps out of the charts is the rsi the 14 day rsi is already nearly touching the oversold levels that tells me that i think this decline is not really going to continue that much further so this blue line is 100 day moving average that is a potential target for this decline in uh, s p 500 and we see that it's not that much lower compared to where the s p 500 is at the moment another potential target for this decline is this march high and again as you see it's not that much lower compared to where s p 500 is at the moment also as you see on the charts this uh, february and march high has been retested several times meaning that it seems to be a relatively important support and resistance zone and looking at fibonacci retracement numbers this was an intermediate cycle low we are currently in, in the intermediate cycle that has been going on since early february this year looking at fibonacci retracement numbers currently the s p 500 is already at 23.6 23 percent retracement that is a possible support zone however that might be broken as nasdaq has already broken below the 23 percent retracement we'll have a look at fibonacci in a minute and nasdaq has already broken uh, quite lower than its 100 day moving average so i guess snp is going to continue sliding down as is indicated by nasdaq and a potential target is again 38 percent retracement that is very close to those february march and june highs and that is often again a support resistance zone 38 percent retracement on the fibonacci so stock markets are probably going to continue to slide down i wouldn't jump into say triple q's yet but i don't expect that this slide is going to be anything severe i would probably guess we still have only two three four percent slide down in s p 500 left in this intermediate cycle decline now let's have a look at nasdaq this is also a daily chart nasdaq has broken below its 100 day moving average and the rsi is already in oversold actually it's uh, more oversold than it used to be in uh, the february slide down which was pretty scary so um for that reason again as i mentioned i don't expect that much further declines in the stock market looking at the fibonacci retracement numbers for nasdaq by the way nasdaq has already reached this March March high let's put a line on that so Nasdaq has already broken slightly below that March high and 
there is a chance Nasdaq is going to continue down to 38% retracement. So again, I think we still have a little bit of the slide down left in the stock markets. Nasdaq, for example, might actually slide down to the February low because that's the low that's been retested more often on the charts. For example, in June this year, that low was the February high was retested during the June low. So again, I expect another two, three, four percent down on the stock markets, but I do not expect a scary drop over the next few weeks. Once I see that the markets, the stock markets are reversing, I might enter, I might buy some triple Qs. This of course is just for your information, this is not an investment advice. The reason why I don't really expect a very painful decline over the next couple of months, couple of weeks, a few weeks or a couple of months is um, because the longer term chart tells me that it's it's a little bit too early for a significant decline. This is an S&P 500 monthly chart over the last couple of decades or more. And um, what do we see on this chart is it usually I I illustrate these cycles on the price chart itself, but I think it's easier to see the cycles on the RSI rather than the price price action itself, specifically on this chart. So low to low, whenever RSI drops into its lows, I'm counting these stock market cycles and um, history tells us that they generally follow a four-year duration with the presidential term also being four years. Since early 90s we see four-year cycles. Sometimes those cycles get stretched. There was a six-year cycle in around mid-2000s. And the long cycles usually followed, are usually followed by a short cycle. And we were back to four-year cycles that lasted from 2008 to 2011 to 2015, late 2015, early 2016, right around here. Late 2015, early 2016 is when this cycle finished. So if we add four years, that's either late 2019 or early 2020. And um, for that reason, as I said, I don't see a significant decline over the next couple of months we are probably finished with this almost almost finished with this intermediate cycle decline and um, actually to be honest I'm not sure if you will agree with me but I expect S&P 500 above above 3000 before we get into this four-year cycle decline because this cycle has only been going on for two and a half years for now. I think we we still have some power within this cycle left to break above 3000 on the S&P 500. But that's relatively longer to medium to longer term forecast. At the moment, we are still moving down and I would wait for a, for a turnaround before entering as i mentioned uh, say triple q's let me know what you guys think about it and um, have a nice day